Wonderful good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Trading Spotlight here at the wonderful, amazing, and extraordinary broker Admiral Markets. What a great pleasure to have you here in our webinar. It's, uh, it's Wednesday, it's Marcus time for talking really interesting uh, uh, spotlights. And our today's topic is one of the foundation of every kind of trading. But uh, first of all, let me tell you a little bit around. Um, welcome around wherever you are. I'm feeling so pleasured and honored that you are part of this webinar. I can see about the names. I guess you're placed around the world and uh, I'm here at the moment in Germany and in Frankfurt because you see I have a different surrounding at the moment. I'm in my hotel. Uh, in my hotel room I have a different uh, room here. Uh, divided from my sleeping room and I have a view if I look out of the window I see the skyline from Frankfurt because once a month um, once time a month I'm in Frankfurt because I'm manager of the business of the um, office here at the um, asset management Bornstadt Beckham partner because I'm a trader here at the asset manager as well my lovely guys, uh, my fellow followers, um, the chat is open and my wonderful, amazing colleague from Admiral and me, we have a look at the chart uh, or at the chat. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask whatever you want. There are no secrets in trading, especially this very interesting topic this afternoon. So, and you can ask whatever you want, type it in the chat box. Let's talk about trading and your trading success and if you watch this video by youtube a little bit later we are feeling honored if you give us a like oh guys if you watch this video later again give us a like or subscribe it or share it with your friends and colleagues or family whatever you want we are feeling pleasured to extend this topic to all to the whole world and um yes I can suppose that uh, you stay and you tune in at the webinar till the end, because at the end we want to talk about a very interesting thing about um, trading spotlight community, and maybe you are still a part of that. If not, it's a surprise. Let's talk about later. And our topic this uh, day is the stop loss. Why and how to use it. So this is. Um, I know a lot of uh, a lot of people have problems with uh, setting stop loss where and how to use it because especially this topic where should I place the stop loss and uh, please feel free if you have questions type in the chat box or if you watch this video later on YouTube type your questions below that video and we will um, we will uh, give you an answer as soon as possible. Yes, I know the sound is not the best in this webinar. As I said, for juniors, I'm not at home. I'm here in my hotel and I have my uh, MacBook in front of me and this is the in microphone of the MacBook. But I guess this, this is a luxury problem we have today. So focus on our topic, the stop loss, why and how, how to use it. Okay, what's, this, what's on our agenda to, uh, today? What is a stop loss? Maybe everybody knows what is a stop loss, but let's talk about it. The benefit of having one and the disadvantage of having not a stop loss and uh, how far you should uh, set the stop from away from the current price and the difference between a trailing stop and a real stop loss, when to use a trailing stop. And let's see about the, um, that's not interesting. That's me. Um, I have experienced more than 20 years, but that's not interesting. You are, so that's the guys in the slide. They are really interesting because that's wonderful colleagues of my uh, amazing broker, Admiral Markets. And they, they are love to support you and this collaboration between me and Admiral Markets. It's amazing. We want to help you to become successful in trading and maybe you should take this spotlights, this trading spotlights, uh, like if you are going to a store and you want to buy something. And maybe you, you know, if you go to Walmart or to wherever you are, 
and take this webinar like you're buying some stuff and you have your you have your how should I say this this buying car I don't know the right English word right now and you uh, move it through the, the store and you take this one and you take this one and you take this one and take it in this webinar the same way and at the end if you go to the uh, if you want to pay there you can decide what is interesting for you and I always suppose to take the paper and the pa uh, to take paper and pen and write down what is interesting for you not anything not everything is interesting for you so but uh, see it like you go uh, buying you go to a store and take what you want and the best thing you don't have to buy for it of course not you don't have to buy it it's absolutely priceless for you and because uh, he wants to help you to become successful in trading and my colleagues from Admiral Markets as well okay let's talk what is a stop loss basically so the dictionary the dictionary says denoting or relating to an order to sell a security or commodity at a spec specified price in order to limit a loss so and this is the interesting point to limit the loss so and this is the real meaning and wording of the dictionary whatever you trade to limit your loss but at the end and this is the second point here in trading the stop loss should not protect your money it should protect your trading idea that's completely different not your money let's repeat the sentence and think about it please the stop loss should not protect your money it should protect your trading idea and maybe you sit in front of the screen right now, wherever you are, and think this is really revolutionary. This is a revolutionary proposition, isn't it? Yes, it is. And you know, I have a little bit of experience in trading and I want to explain it to you. So what is the difference? What is the big difference between protecting your trading idea and protecting your money? And earlier in my trading career, I thought, what the heck, it's, all, it's the same. I have a stop loss to protect my money and to protect my, uh, my, my trading idea. No, that's wrong. I never thought that I had to protect my trading idea. I always thought in my, in my own trading career, I have to protect my money. Yes, of course. And we should never talk about if we basically use a, short, uh, a, stop, a stop loss. And this is a human factor, but we want to talk later. So why, why is the stop loss protecting your trading idea? So let's see. For example, if you are a trend trader, and maybe someone of you are following me in, uh, in my own, in some other webinars of Admiral, for example, or the German one, or in the trading community as well. If you are a trend trader, the stop loss will tell you when a trend is broken. And normally you set your stop below or above the last point three. And now it's interesting. Let's see an example. So we switch to our, uh, to our account. You see it's Admiral Markets here. And let's see, about um, yes maybe this one and let me draw you the trends and then i can explain how the stop loss is protecting your trading idea so for example let's see so we start at the point above it's completely uh, it doesn't matter what kind of trade or what kind of underlying it is so this is the trend maybe you are a trend trader and you want to follow the trend and that's the point so let's see now so come on yes it's a little bit too close no come on i have my laptop here you see so come on can i can you help me please sometimes i have a little bit 
Um, so you see, that's the next correction. So, okay, let's try. Ah, here we go. So, up. So you see, that's the trend. And of course, assuming you would speculate now on a trend continuation. So let's see. You speculate on a trend continuation that the price will go deeper. So and maybe, uh, let me show you. And maybe you have your where enter here in that price. So, and now you are in the profit and you speculate on a trend continuation. So, and now it's interesting. Where will the trend break if the price is recovering and is go up? Where is the trend? Where will the trend break? For that, you have to figure out where is your last valid correction zone. So, um, or maybe we can make it a little bit uh, smaller. Let me uh, show you. Let's just, let's see that one. I guess it's a little bit better. I make this one. So, okay. So I can explain a little bit better. Okay, now sometimes I have an interruption of the, of the Wi-Fi and then it stacks a little bit. So for that, I have to explain it in a, a different way. So you see the connection has been lost. That's the presentation effect, guys. And that's the disadvantage if you are in a hotel. But uh, I have the problem the whole day right now. So let's see. Um, okay, for example, let's make a smaller trend, a little bit smaller trend. So let's start here. Uh, movement. I hope so, it works, <laughs> but it's the internet correction. Because I want to show you it's really, really annoying today. And now it's really annoying today. So again, again, so again, movement. Then the correction. So then we saw the next move to the upper side. Here we go. And now we are, you see, we are deep in the correction. So that's the last, come on guys, that's not really true. That's not really true. Yes, that's the presentation effect. It's about the, the stupid Wi-Fi connection here in the hotel. You see the connection has been lost, but we will come in soon. That's that's one of the interesting points in trading that you learn patience and you can i can make whatever i want in trading nothing is so much annoying like a stupid uh stupid uh internet connection so i but i will try it here so yes here we go okay so now you see this is your last correction zone from the previous point two down to the last point three. I hope so, I hope so. <laughs> so at that moment, and that connection will come back, then I can show you. That's the point and the a good thing in trading spotlight that we most of the times work with slides, not with the here. Okay, that's not really, that's not the real point here. So, let me explain this, delete. Okay, here we go. Let's try again. That's the last correction zone. Here we go. That's the last correction zone. So you see, and assuming, for example, assuming you were into the trade, no, Siri. No, not Siri. And maybe you were into here in that trade. You want to go up here, and now you are engaged, assuming you are engaged in trading. Then your stop loss, your stop loss should be placed, of course, below that last point three. Why? 
And this is now the point. This is the main point, because the stop loss protects your trading idea. What was your trading idea? Your trading idea was that it's your approach that you are a trend trader and you speculate to continue of the trend, that the trend will continue to the upper side. That's the post, that's your trading idea if you are a trend trader. Because uh, a trend trader, an experienced trend trader, always trade out coming of the, or out of the correction, not in the move, always to speculate that the trend will continue long in a long trade or short in a short trend. So at that point, in that point, you see if the price will go deeper than the last correction point, then your trading idea is gone. It's over. The trend is broken after a close not with a spike, that's a besides topic, but if you will see this candle maybe at uh, four o'clock and you will, see the, uh, you will see the close, that's really interesting now, that's really interesting, that's a presentation, a good presentation effect right now. You see, if you have a close below the last point three here, where is my cross here? There's my cross here, you see, there's the last correction point, that's the end of the correction. And that means we have a stable trend. And if you will see a price below the last point three, then you will have a trend break. And your trading idea, your, uh, your uh, intention was to speculate on a trend continuation to the upper side. But now you have a trend break and your idea is gone. That's the point why the stop loss is protecting your trading idea. Yes, and now Swayunia, uh, a really interesting question. What if, or what is, if you don't have a close, maybe we have a spike, then you know the market, the market is talking to you and the market says, mm -hmm, be smart, we tried to break the trend. We wanted to see if there will come more sellers into the market. That means the spike, not picking up some stops. That, that's stupid. That's uh, an information for the crowd. No, a spike means the market and the market is really honest to you. You have to listen, not about your own opinion. You have to listen when the market is talking to you. And sometimes he's barking to you, he's crying to you, listen to me. And if you see a spike below the last point three, that means, guys, we tried it and we wanted to see if there come more sales into the market. And if you don't have a close, there is no trend break. They only tried to do it. They wanted to figure out if there will come more sellers into the market or you know, upper side more buyers, you know. So, and now, next point. I hope you understand it. Only if you have a close below, in that point below the last point three, then you have a real trend break. And then your trading idea is gone because the trend is broken and, the dry, and you have no trend anymore. For that, you have placed your stop there. So, and now, there is a really, really special secret. This is one of the big, biggest secrets in trading. How we can avoid to stop out by a spike. Now there come the secrets. And believe me, I lost so much money by that stupid things and you know that I, I swear to God you know that and you placed your stop the market spiked below that recovered and is going into the direction you wanted to go to right I guess you made this experience in the past how you can avoid to go out or to stop out by such stupid things of course, Sandra. Sandra, of course. No, you are not the only one. You are not the only one. How we can detect a false trend break? 
<laughs> you are not the only one. We are together. I feel it in my heart. I'm always, I thought in the past, I was always <laughs> alone. And I always was looking for the cameras of the, uh, um, uh, of the NSA or <laughs> CIA. Where's the camera? Where's the watching me? Always, I just stopped me out, recovered the price, and then go up in my position. Oh my God, I'm feeling so angered so much times. And I could punch in the screen. And it's so annoying. It's really annoying. It's really, I swear to God, sometimes I, I, got, I thought I am the only stupid idiot around the world who made this experience. But, and you know that it's always the same. If you are out, the price recovers and go in the direction you wanted to trade. It's always the same. And I, I could hear it in my, in my ears. The market is laughing about markets. Hey, Elevate, you're an idiot. You know, you're out. And of course, you want, don't want to break your rules and you cannot come into the bear market back again. And this is really, uh, it's really annoying. I swear to God, it's really, really annoying. But yes, it's Sandra, of course, it's an awful feeling because you cannot know what should I do? Where should I place my stop? I cannot put it miles away because if I want to make a trade in hourly chart, I couldn't place my stop in the yearly chart or the weekly chart. That's stupid. That's not possible. Of course not. So here is the solution because the good news, guys, the good news is there is a great solution. And the solution is one word. No, two words in English, two words. <laughs> German is one word in uh, English, is two words. It calls soft stop. Write it down. This is your most important word today. Soft stop. And here we go. Therefore, I'm telling you, the stop should protect your trading idea. What can you do? And this is the advice from you, for you. I always, always place a soft stop below, in that long trade, below the last point three. What is a soft stop? A soft stop is a stop only you know. The real initial stop or real meaning on the real word called stop loss, it's a stop order, is knowing by the broker. It's in the book map, everybody can see it in the chart, there is my stop. If the price goes into the stop, I'm out. Therefore, because I'm a smart trader, and since up to today, you are a smart trader as well. We know guys, and we know that experience, and we know that behavior of the price and the market, that do I very often try to trade, to break the trend, make a spike and go up again. Place your soft stop there. How can you make it in a, in a trader? Work with, the, uh, with an alert there. Make a red line there, combine it with an alert there, and then and put your real stop more far away. More far away. More, give it more space. It's a little bit of kind of experience. That the reason, that's one of the reasons by the reason we created the trading spotlight community, guys. I will show you last and at the end of this webinar. I will show you that. And there you can see where I place my stop and my soft stop. And this is an amazing thing, guys. Put your soft stop, only you knows. It's like an alert, a mental stop, a knowing stop by yourself and put your real stop far away. Not in a weekly chart, that's stupid, but a little bit more. Give it a little bit space. And then you don't have the problem to stop, uh, to being stopped out by such stupid spikes. Try it. So, and if you have a close, maybe 
you see now at the moment um, we have uh, that is one of the reasons why I love to work with Heikin Ashi because there you have your balance candles, they have a little bit more space. But assuming this candle, this current candle, will have a close below my last point three or my mental or my soft stop. And your, maybe your, how should I say, maybe your uh, initial stop maybe is placed here. So now you have a little bit of space because you can see there was a last low. And maybe well, they will try to figure out, they will test the last low again. And this is stupid to, and that's the problem. Most of the traders put their stop exactly at the point three or high or the low. That's stupid. The market, the market try to uh, figure out if there come more buyers or sellers into the market. You have to know the behavior of the market guys. So, and now what you have to do, assuming you will have the close, below the last point three, then you can see it. And then, then you trail your hard stop or your initial stop, the broken nose, then you put it and set it uh, up and set, come on, please help me. And set it up here to the spike, to the low, not the close to the low of that candle which broke which breaks the soft stop which have the close below your soft stop and believe me that will save you so much money because we know that behavior the prices or the market tries to figure out tested some read at some uh, areas and uh, getting rejecting there and the price recovering go up in a completely different, different direction. In that direction, you tried to go with your trade as, as well. So that's the reason why you should work or why I work with a soft stop and a stop loss. So, and that's the idea uh, the stop. And the stop should protect your trading idea. So now what's about the stop loss? Where is the difference? We talk about it. Be careful, be patient a little bit. So stop loss, protect the trade here with the volume which protect the money. Sandra, a little bit patient. I know you are a wonderful woman and smart patient. We will talk about it right now. So I hope you understand the point, the point that the stop, the stop should protect the trading idea. Because if you have a trend break, if you have a close, let me repeat it to underline it. If you have a close, if you are a trend trader and you want to go into the direction of the trend, now how the right now, how about the Dow theory from the accumulation phase in trend direction, then you have your stop below the last low because the trend will break if you have a close there. Okay, so the stop should protect this trading idea because if you have a close, there is no trend anymore and the trading idea is gone. It's over. So, and now, again, that's the secret. Work with the soft stop there and put your real stop, the broken nose, a little bit deeper or higher if you go short. The main thing is, let's face, give it a little bit distance. So your price can spike and you know the trend will not break every time. They try to figure out if there will come more sellers or buyers into the market. And sometimes the stupid traders, the unexperienced traders, they all of them have the stop there. Not you anymore, not you. And at the end, it's a human thing. We don't talk about it. So now, it's uh, yes, this is a really interesting uh, situation here. Okay, that was the example. If you are a trend trader, okay, so you can say in an extent sense, uh, in an extent sense, the stop loss should protect your trading idea, but in a right or correct sense, the right money and risk management is protecting your money. So 
Maram, we are in English here. It's just only in English. So the stop all up to today, the soft stop protects your trading idea. And now we here we come. That's here we are. The risk money management is protecting your account and your money. Because a risk management is not having a stop loss. It's about the risk management. It's choosing how much money you are willing to risk per trade, maybe 1% of your available money. And that's the special point, is that your MS factor. So is that your moving sliding factor? That's the shortcut, the moving sliding factor. You know the moving sliding factor? Let me ask you. In the past, of course, maybe you're an experienced trader. In the past, were you ever nervous if you are engaged in the trading? Come on, be honest, type in the chat box. Were you ever nervous or exciting if you are engaged in the trade? Do you know that experience when you are moving on your chair, when you stand up and walking left and right and left and right, and you have, you have a, big, uh, a big street in front of your screen, you know that? You know the experience if the heart beats so fast and you're getting sweating hands and you don't know what you should do with your hands and uh, all that, that's moving sliding factor. I guess you know that experience. And if your moving sliding factor is too high, you have the wrong stop. And this is the risk management. And this is the most important point, guys, about the stop loss. That's the absolute main thing. Let me ask, let me read this. Okay, the question is, what's about the risk management if we will see a real, a real pressure on the price and the stop and the price is going through the point three and it goes down and down and down. Okay, sometimes it's happened, that's risk. But that's the point, where is your risk money management? What's about your risk money management? Okay, how can I calculate it? Yes, um, that's really easy. So, first of all, the first question is, you have to figure out for yourself, where is your moving sliding factor? Where is the value? What kind of amount makes you really nervous? exciting, sweeting hands, moving, sliding on your chair, walking left and right to the kitchen, in the living room, to the sleeping room and back. And you need to distract you from trading. Where is that amount? 10 euros? The answer, you only by yourself, not me. It's about yourself. Maybe you remember our very first webinar about the business plan. You know, maybe you remember about the business plan. There was one question in the business plan. What kind of risk person you are? Do you love risk or not? And here we go. Here's the closing of the circuit. Where is your risk? Where is your money management? Where is your value? You're getting nervous. $50? or peso or wherever you are, or euro, or 100, or 20, or 10. Guys, this is the most important thing. You have to figure out where is your moving sliding move uh, factor, at which kind of money, at which amount you're getting nervous, figuring out that. And then we can think about the risk money management, the risk management. Thank you. Uh, my colleague from Admiral Marcus uh, uh, gave you, uh, put this at the first webinar here about the um, business plan. So, and then if you know that number of money, what you are willing to risk, that you don't come into the danger to intervene into the trade, then it's no problem if the market goes down and down and down because you have your stop little bit far away and you can 
risk and you can calculate with that risk. But first of all, you have to figure out where is your, where is your, the amount you're getting nervous. And if you know that number, maybe you are willing to risk by a trade. Let's see. I don't know. It's depending from the account size. Maybe 20 euros or 50 euros. I don't know. I always give the advice to my clients. If you're walking to the street and you see a guy who is begging there, how much money would you give them? If you give him some money, how much? 20 euros? $50? 100? Or one? How much money put you in the back of that beggar of the street? How much? Or how much money would you throw out the window? How much? And it's really interesting. I have so many clients in my Daho family. They are really, they calculate with every cent. You know such people in your around, in your surrounding, you know such people, they are count every pence on the table. They, they are barking to the woman because they give too much money, too much money. They count every, every pence of the damn table. You know such guys. But if they come to trading, they lost a lot of money, a lot of money. So figure out where is your moving sliding factor? How much money you would, uh, you would throw out the window? How much? $100, 200 I guess not. First of all, write it down, which money you are really willing to give out, to risk. And if you know that number, next wise advice, cut to the half. Why? Maybe you are willing to risk 50 euros or dollars. Maybe. Okay, so 50 euros. Okay, if I lose 50 euros, maybe you have an account, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. If you have an account of $100, it makes no sense to risk $50. It's stupid. If you want to do that and you are a gambler, then leave me. Love me or leave me. But that's not real serious trading. But maybe if you have an account of, no way, 5,000 euros. And you're willing to risk 50 euros by a trade or dollars, whatever. It's okay. Fine. And you say, I, I don't care about the 50 euros about my account. I don't care. It's, it's okay. But, but maybe you don't make one trade. So like me, sometimes I have three, four, five, six, seven trades running at the same time. And what are you doing? What are you doing? If you have a drawdown phase and maybe one, two, three, four trades in a row running in a stop, what are you doing then? And this is a really interesting point, guys. So my advice is if you know that number you want to risk, cut it to the half and then you know your real number because you have to speculate, you have to, um, Uh, that's the option, that's the opportunity, the possibility that you lose more than one trade at the same time. At the same time. And that's the point. And now, and then you can see, for example, oh, that's wrong one. And now, for example, uh, I give you an advice, I make it. So sometimes, assuming I have my soft stop here below the last point three, below the last point three. And I use to put my real, uh, my real, come on, my real initial stop, who is depending, depending from my money management, a little bit far away, maybe below the, the previous point three, Or if I have history, I can see where was the previous low, there I put my, my risk money management. And there I have my real stop loss. But below the last point three, I have my um, soft stop. And this is real. This is the real thing, guys. I know. I absolutely know. And that's, the, that's the human thing in trading. That's the human thing. And you know, if you trade or if you set your stop far away and work with the soft stop and you risk less money, 
you realize in that moment, okay, if I, re if I risk less money because I have too good space, I have less profit. Welcome in serious trading, guys. Welcome. And this is the point why so less people getting successful in trading. They want to make huge money, risk a huge money, and will never get, will never be successful in trading. And this is a really interesting point. If you work in that way, yes, you make less money, but with a stable system, with consistent trading, at the end, you will make more money. What is better to make less profits in a consistently way or profits by an accident and having big losses? That's not the sense of real trading, guys. And this is not my part I want to teach. I want to teach you that you can be successful in trading. Everybody can be successful in trading, but you need the right behavior and the real mindset for that. Except that you can make money in trading, but not quick and not huge and not quick and huge. Of course not. You can make money in a calm, soft way. If you work with soft stop, okay, maybe you have your risk, you risk at a stop loss, real stop loss, not the soft stop, real stop loss, 1% of your available account. Okay, then you know, if you have a close below the soft stop, below the soft stop, of course, then you know you can trail your initial stop up if you have a close and you will lose, you will, uh, lose less than one person. That's nice. That's fine. You will lose maybe 1.5 or 1.745, whatever. But very, very seldom, completely 1%. Only like another guy here says or asks me, what, if is the, uh, what is if the price will go through? Okay, then maximum is 1% with the money you're willing to risk. But most of the times you work with a soft stop. Either you are in because you don't have a trend break or you risk so less than 1%. And this is a really, really interesting part, guys. So stop loss again. Oh, ah, I'm a little bit pressured about the time, but I want to share all my ideas with you. Protect your trading idea and it creates calmness and clarity about your setup. You know, spike, okay, no close, trend is not broken, but you are still in. And the risk money management means one of your 1% of your account equity, and you know, the moving, sliding, back to red, getting, getting nervous, and so on. Figure out that amount, and then you are on the right way. So the benefit of having a stop loss, guys, is really easy. It brings calm, calmness and clarity in your trading. And it's a human thing. As I said, why is it a human thing? First of all, you need a stop. And for that, you need to be strong enough. Or do you have your own as much guys, they trail the stop, put it far away, far away, far away, based on their own opinion. I read it in a newspaper. I read it in the, the market must reject them there. The market must recover it there. That's my opinion. The market must recover it there. And I trail my stop far away and I put it in a yearly chart. I swear to God, guys, I swear. You can put your stop as far as you think. The market will pick you up exactly there. And then it will recover recovering and then goes up or down in that way. I swear to God, I made the experience a lot of times. So therefore, it's a human thing. You have to accept, guys, that the stop protects your trading idea. And you cannot be right in every trade. Not every trade will be a winner. It's, of course, not. And for that, you have to be strong enough. Avoid to have your own opinion of the market. Your decisions about trading must be based on rules because trading is based on probabilities. There are no guarantees in the market. No ego, probabilities. For that, you have to be strong enough, guys. And now you know my intention. 
why I always say trading is one thing, but personal development by supporting of a coach maybe the second medal and boss of them you know for, you need for trading success of course so it's a human thing you know i have less or i have risk less money on the other side i make less profit but believe me and trust me guys trust me you can be successful if you follow that rules how much room should you leave you see i I uh, told it to you, maybe there the first red line is your soft stop and put it away in a previous historically uh, area. That's the most important thing and, tray and uh, for uh, risk management. And at the real stop, the broker knows there must be placed your risk management. That's the real uh, point. So, and maybe if you are a movement, so if you are a trench trader, I explained it to you, set the stop below or above the last point three or the last hole, uh, last high and last low, for example, with soft stop, soft stop, please. And if you are a movement trader, set the stop below above the certain candles. What does it mean? That is really easy if you are a movement trader and of course, you want to make uh, by the candles and you are maybe you're short here then trail your stop below the next always the next candles and of course next one as well always trail it to the next candles you can see it here in the screen arrow down and always same soft stop work with an alert or soft stop and then you are really good uh, uh, on the buy on the track here in trading and the most important thing guys i know i'm over the time uh see mark i know it be aware of your money and risk management but this is so much important this topic for our clients believe me so and i told you this is real example if you are a movement trader trail your stop by candle by candle and if you are Maybe you, if you are a trend trader, the first here below the last point three, below the last low, there should set your stop. Soft stop, soft stop. The broker doesn't know. The broker doesn't know. You know. And you can avoid to get out with some spikes. In that way, we are close to the next hour. In that way, look at this one. That's really interesting now. That's the last example. Okay, let's go here, a little bit here. You see? Yes, I know, I'm really, I'm really done here. So if you have a close now, trail your initial stop here to the low of this candle, and maybe the price will keep recovering, go up again. It's really interesting. Try it in that way. So guys, I get some, uh, um, <laughs> I get some, uh, here I told you a lot of things in that webinar here there is no difference between trailing stop trailing stop means you have to trade the stop bar by bar or 0.3 to 0.3 and uh, there is no difference between that stop loss and stop loss but I would always work with soft stop so and the initial stop is broken so you can read it by yourself and that was the examples I show you and uh, yes, that's the conclusion, guys. Trading without a stop loss, not advice for me. Of course, not advisable. Stop loss protects your trading idea. Money and risk management protects your accounts. And the room you will give to the stop, to the real stop, is depending from your account size. And the trading stop protects your profits, of course. And the trading stop, in the end, the stop loss is the big challenge for traders. I guess you understand it. And now, if you want to see how I work with that, follow Traders Yard, the trading, trading spotlight community. Amazing, 17 people already there. Come in, and there you will see, I can explain everything, whatever you want there, and we can talk about that. It's just only for one month uh, free, no live account. After the one month, a live account with money on it, it's absolutely required.
That's the big surprise. We want to help you after the webinar. Don't forget us to join us. Oh, sorry, that was too fast. My wonderful colleague Jens on Friday, he wants to talk about money management and the correct risk. You will learn the next step on your way to successful trading. And for more, you know, contact us wherever you are. Thanks, guys, for your wonderful uh, enjoying here that you enjoyed this webinar. I absolutely apologize to my colleague from Edmund Morgan that they overrun uh, uh, the webinar time. But yes, I'm not a robot. I'm a man like you. And uh, I hope we will see each other next week on Wednesday, same time for the next webinar, next topic. Till uh, that time, I wish you a rest, wonderful week, have a nice day, and be careful about your thoughts, because they're the beginning of your actions. See you. Bye-bye.